Welcome back everyone. Moving on to the next section dealing with quadratic relations. We're now going to move on to the next format of a quadratic relation and we're going to talk about the factored form. So just as a quick review with quadratic relations, what different forms have we gone through so far? Well, we started with the standard form which was just y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, we went over a bunch of questions dealing with that, different kinds of algebraic questions and word problems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then what happened was we dealt with vertex form, and that was in this kind of format. And the biggest characteristics of vertex form is the vertex, getting the vertex, being able to get the vertex right away. Because from standard form, we can't get the vertex right away. We have to do a little bit more work. Here, we can get the vertex right away. And it was the H and K value. And then also what we realized with vertex form was whenever we took the base function y equals x squared and performed transformations on it, we would end up with this format because the transformations would determine that a, h, and k value. Okay, so that's what we did in the previous section. Well, now in this section, what we're going to do is we're now going to deal with the factored form of a quadratic. And the factored form, the way it's going to be is like this over here. Sometimes you'll see different letters used here. Popular ones are maybe like R and S. I'm just going to keep it at M and N over here. The M and N doesn't matter what you're using. And then there's going to be this A value in front over here. And as we're going to see, we're going to go into more detail over the next bunch of videos. We're just going to be dealing with factored form. You're going to see that that A value as in the vertex form, as in the standard form, it's gonna determine whether that parabola is gonna be opening up or down, any kind of stretches on it. But the biggest characteristic to take from factored form is this M and this N value. And actually, what's nice about this is the M and N are the X intercepts of the quadratic. Okay, that's the biggest characteristic that we're going to get from this format over here, right? From vertex form, we were able to get the vertex right away. It was just the H and K, so we could just look at a vertex form quadratic and know right away where the vertex is. Well, with a factored form, we're going to be able to get the intercepts right away. Okay, and the reason why let me just uh, show you, and we're going to go through this again in more detail. But the reason why we're able to get the x-intercepts is because notice that if we plug in m or n for the x value, we're going to get a y value of 0. Because remember, x-intercepts, just in general, the y value of any x-intercept, and x-intercepts are always going to be on this axis, the y value of it is always going to be 0. Right, So when I say that M and N are the x-intercepts, it means that the coordinates of them is going to be M and 0 and N and 0. Okay, And you can verify that because notice what happens if we plug in M for the x values. We'd end up with M minus M, right? we're plugging in M for the x values, and then we'll have m minus n. Okay, this is going to be something, this is going to be something, but what's this bracket going to be? This bracket is going to end up being 0 all the time, no matter what the m value is. This is going to be some kind of number, but then notice that this times this times this, because it is 0, it's going to create a y value of 0. Same thing if we plug in n. Right? If we plug in n, we'll have n minus m. Then over here, we'll have n minus n. So now this bracket would be 0. Sorry, over here, it's n minus m. 
and we'll have a, which is going to give us a y value of zero. Okay, so that's why it intuitively makes sense that the m and the n are x-intercepts, because if we plug either of those in, it's going to create that whole thing. It's going to make the whole thing zero. So it's going to give us a y value of zero for each of those. So for example, if we bring in an actual, um, if we bring in actual values here, so let's say we got like, let's say we're working with three for the a value, it doesn't really matter for the a value. And then let's say, I don't know, um, let's say we got x minus two, x minus four. Right? Very simple parabola here. The intercepts here, the x-intercepts, are going to be 2 and 0 and 4 and 0. Okay, one more time. If we plug in 2 for the x values, we'll have 3 times 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. And over here, we'll have negative 2. So 3 times 0 times negative 2 would give us a y value of 0. If we plug in 4 for the x values, 3, 4 minus 2 which is 2, and then 4 minus 4, which is 0. So we'll have 3 times 2 times 0, which would give us that y value of 0. Right? So that's what's nice about the factored form. We're getting the intercepts right away. Now, another thing I want to mention, very similar to that h value. Remember that if we had x minus h, it would be the opposite sign with the vertex here. Same thing. Notice that we have x minus 2, so notice it's going to be positive 2. Or x minus 4, notice it's going to be um, positive 4. So if we had instead like x plus 2 over here, then the intercept would be negative 2 because notice negative 2 plus 2 would give us 0, right? If we plugged in positive 2, it would be 2 plus 2, which would give us 4, and then we'd get some kind of y value. It wouldn't be a y value of 0. Right, so it's always going to be the opposite sign. And again, as we do more examples, you'll just get more and more used to that as you did when we were dealing with the, um, with the vertex form. Another thing I want to mention is um, this could be integers, right? This could also be decimals. It could be fractions. You're going to see as we do more examples, sometimes you'll see... Um, these factors, for example, be maybe in like this kind of format, let's say 3x plus 4, All right? It's not just going to be x plus something or x minus something. Sometimes there will be a value in front of the x. Okay, so that's going to be another case. And again, we'll do a bunch of questions, so don't worry too much about that right now. Basically, what would happen is the intercept here it would be negative four over three. The way you could get that is we could figure out what x value makes this bracket zero, right? Bring the four over and then divide by three. So the x intercept from something like this would be negative four over three, all right? And then over here, as we just stated, the other x intercept would be negative two. Okay, but don't worry about that too much. This is just a general overview. Just remember when you got something like this, the m and the n are the x-intercepts. So that's the biggest characteristic, but because we have the intercepts, it's actually very easy to get the axis of symmetry as well, because if you remember, if we got two intercepts, let's say we got a quadratic with two intercepts, the axis of symmetry, which is the x value of that vertex, it's always going to be right in the middle of those x-intercepts. Okay, so another characteristic that we can get here is that axis of symmetry, which is the same as the x value of the vertex, is going to be the midpoint between those intercepts. So what we could do is we could just, how do we find the midpoint of something? We just add the two values up, divide by two. So that's another nice characteristic. We gotta do a little bit more algebra, a little bit more work for that, right? We're not gonna be able to get it just by looking at it, but that is a nice characteristic that we can get 
when we have those intercepts. We could just add them divided by two to get that axis symmetry, to get the x value of the vertex. Then if you want the y value of the vertex, you could just take that x value and plug it into the equation to get the corresponding y value of the vertex. All right, so just a quick overview of what we're gonna be covering in this next section. We're gonna be focusing on this factored form. And in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a bunch of quadratics in that format and go through these characteristics.